Ayo, hey what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So, it is that time of year again and school is coming up really quick. With me also heading back to college soon, I have to decide for myself which note-taking app I will be using for this year since I literally use my iPad for everything I have to do with school. So I would say the two best note-taking apps for the iPad in 2022 are Notability and GoodNotes 5. And so in my own personal search to help me determine which one's gonna be best for me in the upcoming semester, I wanted to make an updated comparison video between the two to help you also decide which one will be best for you and so that you don't waste money on one of them that you don't end up liking. So in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the five main categories between both note-taking applications. That's gonna start with the price of them and then the organization you can expect to find within them, the customization, each of their specific features, and then of course the writing experience that you can expect from both of these applications. And then at the end of the video, I will go over which application I will be using for my upcoming semester and why that is. So this video is gonna go pretty in depth on each of the writing applications. And so if you want a specific part of it, I will leave time codes down in the description so you can jump to whatever part of the video you think will be most beneficial for you. So the first category I wanna get into is the pricing of both applications. So back at the start of 2021, I purchased Notability. And at the time, this was a one-time purchase of $8.99. But since then, Notability has updated their payment model to a yearly subscription. This subscription model comes in two forms, a free version that is very limited. The plus version will cost you $10.99 for your first year. And then each year following that, it will cost you $11.99 and this full version gives you access to all of its features. So since I bought Notability before this payment change, I have a classic version now, and that gives me all the features that I had before, and I don't have to pay a yearly subscription to keep them, but I can always upgrade to their Plus program if I wanted to in the future. So I know that $10.99 and $11.99 sounds like a lot for an application for a yearly plan, but if you think about it, all the school supplies that you'll be saving with this one application, notebooks, folders, pens, highlighters, pencils, just all of it, it will all be in this one application. You're essentially paying a dollar a month for the application if you think about it in that way and that it's definitely a lot more than what you'll be spending on school supplies year in and year out so again i know it's a lot but just keep that in mind it's really a dollar a month and i think most people can afford that for this application so what's new in 2022 with goodnotes 5 is that there are also two versions available to you there's a free version where you can try it out and see if you actually enjoy the application before you purchase the full model. So with this free version, you are limited to only three notebooks, but at least you're able to try out the application before you purchase it. And then if you wanna go limitless, then it's a one-time purchase of $7.99 and you don't have to keep paying yearly for this application. So obviously GoodNotes 5 wins this category with pricing as it's just a one-time purchase and it's less than a one year subscription to Notability, but we'll see if the features outweigh the GoodNotes 5 pricing in Notability. So the second category I wanna get into is the organizational system within these applications. So looking at Notability, it has made huge jumps since last year and some current updates with the application. So there are three levels of organization. You have notes, subjects, and then dividers. Notes are your individual documents, which can be blank templates, imported PDF files such as lecture slides and pretty much anything else. Then there are subjects, which is where your notes go into. Subjects can either have colored dots to the left of them or will be a solid color, which you can alter from one to another by going to settings, themes, and toggling on or off colorful subjects. These subjects can be color coordinated and you have up to 21 options to choose from. And you can even lock specific subjects with a password that you will need to enter to access the notes inside if you have any personal or private information in those. I also wanna point out that you cannot put subjects into other subjects. You can only put subjects into dividers which are the top level of organization within Notability. These dividers have triangles to the left of them which indicate whether they are expanded or collapsed. You you can place both other dividers and subjects into a divider by holding down and dragging the subject to another until you see the blue line appear. You can tell when it'll be placed into a divider because the blue line will slightly move inwards. So I wanna preference that Notability only allows a maximum of five layers in a single divider. So yes, like while like it's a limited number, I do think five levels of organization for any class or anything else that you might use this application for is plenty for most people. You can also sort all of your documents in alphabetical order by the date it was last modified 
or the date it was created. You can also view everything in a gallery form or a list form. So how I would personally organize my own classes for this upcoming semester is I would make one large divider for all of my classes for that year, then make a divider for each class I'm taking, and then put subjects within each class for homework, lecture notes, papers, recitations, and what other aspects of the class might be tailored for them. To get a new folder, you go to the document section and press on the plus button. Here, create a folder and then you can put as many folders inside of each other as you want. Each folder can have multiple notebooks, individual notes, and other documents such as PDFs. You can sort all of your documents by date, name, or type of document, and have it in either a list or a gallery view. So similar to how like I would organize everything on Notability, I kind of have the same system here with GoodNotes 5. Here, I would have one main folder for my upcoming semester, then inside that I would have folders for each class, and inside of each class I would have folders for the different aspects, such as homework, lecture notes, and study guides. So I personally think that Notability has a more Apple vibe to it when it comes to like, its organizational system, well, GoodNotes 5 reminds me of like a Windows device with all these folders and how you can put them into each other. Even though GoodNotes 5 can have more layers of organization, I would still consider these to be both pretty equal and on the same playing field as one another. So moving over to the third category now, this is gonna be page customization and looking at notabilities first and starting with the actual layout of the pages. By going to the settings, you have a few options that you can change to your liking here. First in themes, you can make the application match your iOS appearance. So when you're in dark mode, Notability will automatically switch to dark mode and vice versa. Then you have the colorful subjects, which I went over before, and you have four options for how you want the app to look. There is a light mode, a dark mode, dark blue, and a jet black. Then in the document section, you can set up what you want your default note to look like. You can have it so any note you make will come with a date and or a time of creation. And the template of your note is also pretty customizable. By pressing on edit, you can choose from pre-made templates from the gallery, which are made and shared by other users. And I'll get more into the gallery later on in this video. But then there are also pre-made templates from Notability themselves, which include a plain piece of paper, ruled, grid, and dotted. And by pressing on the ellipses in either of them, you can change the spacing to how you want. So if you're generally a small writer, then you can make the spacing of these a lot tinier and you can fit a lot more onto a page. And if you're also a large writer, then you can increase the spacing of this. So it really is customizable to how you personally write yourself. You are also able to change the color of any of the basic templates and you even have a few patterns to choose from. And then there are also a bunch of other templates you can choose. There's college ruled, engineering paper, music staffs, sports plays, daily planners, and more. So once you have your default page set up, you can now choose between either a seamless view or a single page view. I personally like the seamless view as you can just keep scrolling and there are no harsh breaks in your notes. And you can also just scroll really fast from one section to another. While the single page view, you need to individually swipe from one to another, and it just takes a lot longer to get from the start of a note to the end of it. Then in the typing settings, you can set up default text boxes for type notes. Here you have the ability to change the font style, the spacing between lines, font size, and the color of the text. So now moving over to page customization in GoodNotes 5, going to the settings and pressing on notebook templates, you can customize both notebook covers and page layouts. Starting with the covers, you can select an aspect ratio and if you want it to be in portrait or landscape orientation. Scrolling down, you can find all the different styles of notebook covers and there are multiple color variations of each style, which is nice if you like to keep a uniform look to all your notes. What's nice is you are also able to import any photo and use it as the cover of your notebook, so you can really customize how your notes look. As for the paper, you can choose between three colors, white, dark, which is actually not completely black, and a pale yellow color. Then for the different templates, it's actually pretty similar to Notability. You have a blank piece of paper, dotted, squared, narrow and wide ruled. You also have different variants of planners with monthly and weekly ones and different types of music sheets. But you're also able to import any of your own templates that you would want to use. The only views you're able to switch between are vertical and horizontal scrolling. The vertical resembles Notability seamless view and the horizontal scrolling is like the single page view from Notability. The only other thing that you're able to customize in GoodNotes 5 is the toolbar location. By going to the settings or ellipses in the note, then go to document editing and you can set the tool position to either the top or bottom. Shockingly, there is no setting to change the theme in GoodNotes 5. So whatever your iPad is currently set to, either dark or light mode, 
GoodNotes 5 will mirror that in the app itself. So one quick note I wanna add that kind of like relates to page customization is that you can import different types of PDF and PowerPoint documents into both the applications but I really like how Notability does it more. But one thing I wanna point out is that Notability will match additional pages that you add into the document to the current PDF size. So as you can see from like the scratch paper that I add into the same document as the PDF, in Notability they line up, and GoodNotes 5 does not do this as it keeps the same aspect ratio. So I do know that you can import your own templates for your blank sheets of paper with a PDF, but Notability is just so much easier as it just, goes right in there and it lines up perfectly with the PDF while GoodNotes 5 does not. And so that's just one thing I wanna point out is that GoodNotes 5 kinda of looks a little awkward when you import PDFs and then add additional note pages to it. And I really just like how Notability does it more so than GoodNotes 5. So now moving over to the fourth category, and this is gonna be the writing features specific to each application. So starting off with Notability, there is a toolbar at the top. The first option that you'll see is the text tool. Pressing on this and then tapping anywhere on the note will allow you to type your notes. Here you can change the font, the text size, color, and all the basic text features that you normally can in most applications. You will see you have three hearts with an A, B, and C in them to the right. These are pre-saved text styles, so you don't have to customize them each time. You just tap on one with your favorite text style in it, and then when you start typing with the note, it shows up with that style. Also on the left side of this menu is a bullet point list, and all the way to the right is where you can change this from either a bullet pointed list two numbered and then a checklist. And then to the right of this are the indentations of your notes. So to the right of this is the pen tool and this is where you're gonna be able to customize all of your writing utensils. By double tapping on the pencil icon, this will pull up all the options. Here you have a choice of 12 different pen thicknesses to choose from, four pen styles, which consist of a constant pen thickness, one that varies in thickness, a dashed line, and then a dotted line. I personally think that the first option is the best because it keeps your strokes a consistent thickness and won't vary with pressure. And to the right of this, you can add any color you want. When you press on the plus circle, you can find any color by using its hex code, sliders, or the eyedropper tool if you wanna copy a color that is already inside of another document. And then probably one of my favorite features about Notability and one of the main reasons why I keep coming back to this note-taking application is the favorites toolbar. Once you have a pen set to the specifics that you like, then you press on the favorite button at the bottom and this will place it in your favorites toolbar. This favorites toolbar can have pre-saved pens, highlighters, and erasers added to it. You can move each pen and writing utensil by holding down and dragging it from one side to another to help you organize this bar. You can continue to adjust the settings of each pen within this bar and to remove one, you double tap on it and then press the remove button when it appears. You can move this favorites bar anywhere on the edge of the screen by moving this gray little slider and dragging it around. And if you just want it completely out of the way, then pressing on the X on the other side will make it disappear. And don't worry, this isn't gone forever. If you wanna find it again, it's the little star icon at the bottom left of your note. This is such a great feature for me because I personally use a whole bunch of colors between different highlighters and pens while note taking to make things stand out from one another, like important little side notes or like kind of like tips on how to like do a process of a math problem. I use so many different pen colors and just having them all right there at the top, just one quick tap away is such a great feature and I love this favorites bar in Notability. The next tool is the highlighter and this has the exact same settings as the layout as the pen. The highlighter is a great tool to help make sections stand out from one another and it's also really great to help color in diagrams, which is what I use them for a lot. Then we get to the eraser tool, which has less customization than the others. This gives you the option to erase whole or partial strokes. So I usually leave it on the whole strokes because it's much easier to just erase like a one stroke of a letter, like the top part of an A, and then redraw it in instead of trying to exactly erase whatever it is with the partial eraser. I think it's quicker, easier, and I just like it a lot more than the partial strokes. But with the eraser settings, you also get the choice of 12 different size erasers to choose from. To the right of this is the lasso tool, and this might be more useful than you think it is. The lasso tool can be used in two different ways, either a square that scales in size as you move it, or a free draw tool to get exact pieces of text. Once you lasso something, there's a cool few things that you can do to manipulate the text. The first thing you'll be able to do is to move the text around, increase and decrease the size of it, 
and rotate it if you need to. But when you tap on the lasso text, you get many more options to choose from and this is where this tool really shines through. The first option is style, which allows you to change the thickness, color, and pen style of the text. The next option is to duplicate the text, which I usually use to copy and paste over diagrams or graphs that just need slight changes and to not have to completely redo the whole thing itself. After that is copy and paste, which are pretty self-explanatory. Next is convert, which will turn any handwriting into text or into math equations. And then there's group, which allows you to move around different pieces of text and they'll act as one single piece. Save creates a sticker for you, which you can use later on to paste into any other document. And finally, there's delete, which will get rid of anything in the lassoed area. The final tool is the finger icon, which allows you to freely scroll throughout your document without drawing on it and making marks all over it. And it's kind of more so like a view mode than anything else. So next is the record mode, which in theory will record a professor or teacher walking through a lesson, and you'll be able to replay it back after in case they were speaking too fast or you missed a part of the notes. What's cool is that your notes will actually redraw themselves back as your recording plays through, so you can re-follow along with what you were writing as your professor was talking. So I know that this feature sounds great, but in reality, there are a couple flaws with it. The first is that you're using your iPad speakers to record the professor, and when you're writing on it and just breezing through notes, there's a lot of tapping that goes on on your screen, and the microphones on your iPad actually pick up this tapping, and you can hear it through the recording itself. So it makes it hard to like, hear the professor talking as there's like all like these taps like in the recording itself. And the second is that you're recording someone usually at like a fair distance away, especially like if you're in a big lecture hall. And so it can pick up a lot of other noises and it's not the clearest audio in the world. You can go into the settings on the right side of this toolbar and adjust an equalizer and even add a voice boost option to try to combat these problems. And so yes, while this feature does work, I don't think it works quite as well as intended. From here is the media tool, which is represented by a plus button at the top right. And this is where you'll be able to import all types of different things into your document. You can import images to your device, take photos that will directly be uploaded. You can scan documents, create and use stickers, GIFs, web clips, and stickies. These are all just like little extra add-ons that can help spice up your notes and make them stand out from other people. The ellipses next to the media button is where you can customize your note page, but I already covered that in the previous section. And finally to the right of that is the page view, which is where you can quickly scroll through all the pages in your notes, bookmark important pages, and also duplicate and delete specific pages that you might not need anymore. So another little cool feature is the zoom box at the bottom right corner of your notes. This allows allows you to move a box around your notes and gives you an enlarged area to add fine details or erase little specific lines in your writing. I have used this feature a couple times before and it's actually been pretty helpful, especially when trying to add specific points to like diagrams or graphs, especially when they need to be accurate. So this next feature is actually really helpful and I don't think many people actually know about it because it's kind of hidden, but if you go to the left side of your screen and you swipe from left to right, it pulls up the note switcher. This allows you to quickly switch between notes that are organized by most recently opened, or you can search a specific note. What else is really neat is you can have multiple notes open at the same time by pressing on the ellipses and either opening it horizontally or vertically with the current note you have open. You can also adjust the size of each note by moving the middle section around and sliding it to how you want each note to be set up. I find this feature to be really helpful when studying different types of math problems, so I actually really do like this note switcher feature. And finally at the top left is the export button, here you're able to create shareable links for other people to open up in their own apps. You can email the notes as PDFs, choose which specific pages you want to be sent, print the document, and publish your notes to the gallery. So I know that I've mentioned the gallery a few times when talking about notability. And so before I go to GoodNotes 5, I wanna talk about what the gallery actually is. So this is an area where you can upload notes or templates you have made for anyone else to download and use. In addition, you can also go to the gallery to find a bunch of useful documents made by other users that you can then download. These range from types of papers to little doodles that you can save as stickers, planners, color palettes, headers, 
and much more. This is a new feature that became a thing when Notability created their subscription model as now it's kind of like cloud storage for everyone to upload their documents to. And I do actually really like this feature as now you kind of feel like a little more connected. You can use like useful templates that people have made and I am a big fan of this gallery feature. All right, so finally switching over to GoodNotes 5 writing features. So for this section, I'm gonna breeze through everything that's pretty much exactly the same with Notability. I am gonna mention them though, but I will point out and explain the differences between the two applications. So the first difference I wanna point out and that you'll probably see for yourself are the tabs that are created when you open up multiple notes at one time. I actually really enjoy this feature as you can quickly switch from one note to another with just a single tap. You can also close them out by tapping on the X to the left side of each tab and the right side allows you to open up a new window which now you can have two notes open at the same time which is similar to Notability's note switcher feature. But with that one, it was one application, like one Notability app opened up with two notes in it. While this GoodNotes one is now two separate GoodNotes 5 applications open. So just a tiny difference, but they essentially work the same way. So moving over to the toolbar now, the very first icon is the zoom box and this functions exactly like Notability's. So not much new to cover here. So moving over from here is your pen and double tapping on this icon will pull up the settings and you have a choice of three different pen types. The first is the fountain pen, which produces the least consistent pen strokes because it has both tip sharpness and pressure sensitivity sliders to really tune how you want this pen to react to your writing. Next is the ball pen, which will be the most consistent for pen strokes and the one I prefer to use because it makes my handwriting look a little more neat and consistent throughout. And then finally is the brush pen and this only has a setting for pressure sensitivity and this one gets the thickest, the fastest I've noticed and that I've seen between the three of them. And then also in these settings, you have draw and hold functions, which will create perfect lines and shapes if you hold your pen down for a split second second and I always have this on. You also have snap to other shapes which is useful if you want to connect graphs and diagrams to each other and an option to fill a shape if you're trying to color it in after you create it. So changing the color and size of the pens that you're using is not found specifically in the pen section but all the way over to the right you'll see three different color sections and three different pen thickness sections. Unfortunately that's the most you can have is just three colors and three thicknesses but double tapping on a color will give you 20 more options that you can pre-save for quick access later on, but you can also add any color you want by pressing on the customize button. Double tapping on one of the pen thickness settings will pull up a slider that is measured in millimeters. So what I really like about this is that instead of just 12 specific sizes, you have almost exact customization for how thick you want your pen setting to be, but again, you can only pre-save three of them at a time, so it's kind of like a pro and a con at the same time compared to Notability. And then just quickly adding on to the colors, I don't think this is nearly as good as Notability's favorites bar, as you can have just so many colors and they're just one tap away, one tap away. Here, you have to tap on it and then add another color. And it's just another step that you have to do to get the color that you want. So I definitely like don't mind this. I'm glad that there are three pre-saves, but I don't think it's as good as Notability's favorites bar. Moving over to the eraser tool, double clicking on this gives you the choice of three eraser types. The first is a precision eraser, which only erases partial strokes, but it is best for really small words or drawings. Next is the standard eraser, which also erases partial strokes, but is better suited for erasing larger areas. And finally is the stroke eraser, which is the one I use the most and it erases entire strokes just like Notabilities. So I know that this is just a very like simple touch, but I really do enjoy how GoodNotes 5 kind of gives you like a little preview in like the eraser settings of what each eraser does. I don't know, it's just a nice touch and I kind of like that about that. What is unfortunate though, is that you can't specifically choose the size of your erasers. They each have three predetermined sizes that you cannot adjust afterwards. I do prefer how Notability gives you more customization with your erasers than GoodNotes 5 does, but I'm sure that most people can make any of these three erasers work for pretty much most of the things that they will be erasing inside of the app. The next tool is the highlighter tool and this has the same customization features as the pen with only three colors of pre-saved and sizes. But one setting that I do really prefer GoodNotes 5 highlighters over Notabilities is the draw in a straight line feature. This will auto straighten any highlighted line without having to hold your pen for that extra second like in Notability. This makes highlights really quick and I really like when annotating articles because this really does save me a lot of time and it's just like natural like with the flow of highlighting like how you would 
in real life like with pen and paper but this just allows it to happen right there without having to hold it for that one extra second and I really do like that feature with GoodNotes 5. After this is the shape tool and this allows you to quickly and freely draw shapes with or without wanting them to snap into a perfect shape. Then is GoodNotes 5's takes on the lasso tool you can cut, copy, paste, delete, and resize text just like in Notability. So one thing I do prefer with Notability's lasso tool over GoodNotes 5 is that as soon as you lasso something in Notability, you can adjust the size and rotation of it but in GoodNotes 5, you have to specifically press on resize. And I just don't think it's as quick as Notability. So that's one thing that I have noticed with these two applications. You can also change the color, take a screenshot and export this in any format as a text or email. The add element button turns whatever's lassoed into a sticker that can be copy and pasted into any other document later on. And you can also convert any handwriting into text. The next tool are stickers, which work just like Notability. And after that is the tool to import photos. Then next is the toolbox tool, which functions almost exactly like Notability. But what I would like to point out is that you can change the way the text boxes look and some of them look like little sticky notes, which is actually really cool. The little text box to the right with a heart in it is how you can pre-save your favorite text sizes and text fonts to quickly access them later on. So the last tool is the laser pointer, and this is a lot more useful than I actually thought it would be. You have two different options for the laser pointer. The first is a single dot that follows your pencil, and the second leaves a trail as you draw and will stay on the screen until you stop drawing for about a second. I have used this laser pointer now for a few different reasons, the first is like when I'm screen sharing my iPad during a Zoom meeting or something and using that to really just help like narrow in on what I'm talking about and to help explain something. And also is like when I'm in person with a friend and trying to like explain like a math process or a math problem to them, instead of like marking up the screen as I'm trying to like point stuff out, just having that little laser pointer there is actually really helpful to help draw things and like bring attention to specific things you want to talk about. So I actually wish that Notability had this laser pointer feature. So quickly running through the top bar options, the first is your page selector where you can export specific pages from a document and send them wherever you want. You can also view your favorited pages and outlines. The search feature is extremely impressive on this app. You can search your handwritten notes and I have found that it does a fantastic job doing this. Not only can you do this within a note, but you can also search any handwritten note from the main page of this and this will search throughout all of your notes and find exactly what you're looking for. Then there's a bookmark option to help you easily find important pages that you might need to save for later on when studying for a test or exam. So one little difference that I thought was worth mentioning is how each application adds extra pages to an existing note. In GoodNotes 5, you need to go to the bottom of your page and then you drag up and hold for a split second and this will create a new page. While Notability on the other hand will automatically generate a new page at the bottom once you draw something on the previous one. I like Notability's take on this new page generator because there's always just one there and you don't have to waste that one extra second when just holding up and dragging from the bottom like in GoodNotes 5. So again, like when you're just breezing through note taking and all this time does add up over like your four years of college, just always having that one extra page at the bottom and you not needing to go down and create it, I do like that better in Notability. So there are a few other unique features in GoodNotes 5 that I wanna talk about. And the first one is adding comments to notes. You can create a new comment by pressing and holding anywhere on your note and then tapping on the add comment button, which gives you a little chat box that you can come back to and update with notes in the future to help keep progress on whatever you're working on. Once you click off the note, it will sit on the page as a little blurb and this will correspond with a number as to what note this is in your document. So this comment feature becomes even more important when I get into this exclusive feature for GoodNotes 5, and that is collaborative documents. So pressing on the export button in a doc opens up the option to enable share link to collaborate. Once you press on this, it will begin to upload your document to the cloud, and you'll be able to share this generated link with friends and classmates so you can all work on the document at the same time together, which is a huge benefit. I can see this feature being extremely helpful for group projects and for people who are studying together. They can all share one document, put on different example problems, then they all have it together to look off of. So I personally don't have like any other friends that I know that use GoodNotes 5. I really wish I did, but I can just definitely see this being a huge benefit for any student out there. And I really wish Notability had this option as well. Also, the people you're sharing the document with can view comments that you've made 
and respond to them in real time. So they are like just conversations in those little blurbs to help you like realize and understand different concepts within a note. So another new feature that has been very recently added to GoodNotes 5 is called Contribute to Community. This is essentially the gallery in Notability with a few slight differences. To upload a document to it, you go to the share button and press Contribute to Community. Here you can select specific pages you wanna upload. You can add a title, description, subject, and even attach it to a specific school and class so others can more easily find it. Then you'll have to create an account and publish it. Once you upload your first note, you will now have a new tab in the main menu section of GoodNotes 5 called Community. So GoodNotes 5 Community section actually has a really cool point system that encourages people to upload their documents for everyone else to use. You can earn points from uploading your own personal notes or by other people using your notes and visiting the community page every single day. When you get 100 points, you can purchase a one week pass, which gives you access to download more content than just the freebie documents. There are many documents in this area labeled freebie, which you don't need the pass to download, but then there are other documents which require this pass to use. And then 360 points will get you an entire month of access. So since this community section in GoodNotes 5 is very new still, I don't think it's quite as vast as the gallery and notability, but with this point system encouraging people to put up their documents, I can see this exponentially growing in just a couple years and then overpassing the gallery and notability. So I really do actually appreciate this like kind of point system that GoodNotes 5 has, as I think that it'll just help this whole community section become a real thing in the future and become very useful for people to use and look up different notes and study guides from. And then the last difference between GoodNotes 5 and Notability in terms of features is GoodNotes 5 presentation modes. You can choose to mirror your entire screen so that the viewer sees exactly what you do, or you can mirror just the note so the viewer only sees the note and no toolbar, or you can mirror the full page so that the viewer won't see when you zoom in and zoom out and it just stays as the entire note on their screen for themselves. So I personally think that the combination of presentation modes and the laser pointer in GoodNotes 5 lends this application to be used a little more professionally than Notability. So again, depends like if you're using this for job purposes or school presentations, GoodNotes 5 might be the way to lean instead of Notability then. So the fifth and final category is the writing experiences. And this is probably by far like one of the most important between the applications. So just disregarding all the features with each application, they are both very good writing experiences as they both do feel fluent and work well with the iPad. But if I had to choose a winner, I think GoodNotes 5 slightly takes the edge in terms of the writing experience itself. I don't quite know exactly what it is, but my handwriting just looks slightly neater and more consistent in GoodNotes 5. I have also noticed that I have been able to make nicer looking notes, and here are a few examples so you can see. So which application do I crown the winner in 2022? Well, honestly, I know this is kind of a lame answer but it really does just depend on what you plan on using this application for. If you want slightly more writing features and customization for your page layout, and you don't plan on collaborating with other people, then I definitely recommend going with Notability. It has that Apple look to it, and I know a lot of people really do like it, and I do enjoy it myself too, a lot. The Favorites toolbar is such a huge advantage that I wish GoodNotes 5 would have some kind of incorporation into their own application. I use so many colors while note-taking and having them all in one place is just so amazing. But on the other hand, if you know that you're gonna be working with friends and you like that collaborative setting and workspace with other people, and you're also looking to kind of take, I would say like slightly more like professional looking notes, then I would go with GoodNotes 5. And also another thing that you can't forget about is the pricing of these two applications. GoodNotes 5 is a lot better priced than Notability. And also I do foresee that whole community section of GoodNotes 5 blowing up in the next year or two with a whole lot more resources from everyone using it. So definitely keep that in mind. I do think the community section in GoodNotes 5 will be better than the gallery section in Notability in the future. So now the application that I'm gonna be using for this upcoming semester is going to be GoodNotes 5. So hear me out. I'm going with GoodNotes 5 because I've actually been kind of switching back and forth from semester to semester between Notability and GoodNotes 5. And I'm kind of just on that rotation of GoodNotes 5 now. I'm really excited for this whole like community section. And I really like want to work on my own note taking skills. I want to make them look better, more aesthetic. And then I want to start uploading them to there for other people to use to kind of help out. 
I'm going to be going into some advanced math classes with my master's degree. So I do want to like kind of put them out there, make them look nice and good, and really see like what I can do with my own note-taking abilities. And I think GoodNotes 5 is a place for me to do that and to kind of really advance my note-taking capabilities for myself. <sighs> okay, so that's going to be it for the video. That was a long video to make. I went through a lot of them and I hope I was able to help you realize and figure out which one's gonna be best for you between all the features, the pricing, rank experience, and just everything about the applications. So if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something new, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And with that being said, have a great day everyone and cheers.